Uh, we are now to the portion of our agenda where we will be taking a look at the standard of review and revisions. And uh, I will call on uh, Dr. Tiffany Perkins to present to us. And of course, she will uh, be assisted by Dr. Curtis and Dr. Johnson. Mr. Chair, before we turn over to Dr. Perkins, if I can make just a couple of comments. <coughs> sure, uh, absolutely. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, Mr. Davis's committee is the one that will be dealing with the standards. So, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, I'm sure my colleagues will recall that our last meeting, we were provided a set of documents which trace the history of our state, particularly this board's commitment to effective standards to drive teaching and learning in our public school system. And part of that uh, history tour, if you will, is the ongoing process that we have to continuously review standards, not just math and English language arts, but all of our standards. And that process to continue to review our, and update and improve our standards was underway for some period of time, gathering input from our frontline teachers and when the Academic Standards Review Commission was formed. Well, at that point, we pushed pause on our ongoing process and provided the time and space for the Standards Review Commission to do its work. Well, that work's obviously been concluded. We've received the recommendations from that commission. And so today, what we're doing is combining those recommendations, the previous work of gathering input from teachers and other stakeholders, along with the history of what we've done in the past on this uh, topic, to propose a set of next steps towards improving the standards as tools for driving teaching and learning. And so while we'll focus today on math, high school math, K-8 math and English language arts. I just wanted to remind ourselves and the public that this is part of the board's constitutional responsibility and the board's uh, duty to continue to drive teaching and learning in the state. And it's part of our overall standard review. So with that, Dr. Perkins. Thank you very much. So um, as a teacher first, it's important that if we're doing assignments, then we have an assessment. So if you'll get a piece of paper out, and number one through 10, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just, just kidding. So as Mr. Davis uh, shared with you an overview of, of the board's authority in terms of reviewing standards, um, today what we'll be doing is I'll give a brief overview. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on things that we've already talked about, but they're, I think, really critical components to set the stage and set the context of the presentations that will follow. So, um, and thank you to the State Board, as I know you all are committed to making sure that North Carolina content standards challenge each child to learn, to achieve, and to fill his or her potential, and that also aligns with the uh, general statute around standards. And I know that students and their college and career readiness and their success in the future are the ultimate anchor of that work. So thinking about um, what our staff will do today in updating you on any progress that we've made in the State Board's process for standards review and to also give proposed timelines for ELA K-12 review and revisions, high school mathematics review and revisions, and K-8 uh, mathematics review and revisions. I thought it was important to just go back to General Statute 115C-12, the board shall develop a comprehensive plan to revise content standards and standard course of study, shall involve and survey a representative sample of parents, teachers, and the public to help determine academic content standard priorities and usefulness, full review of available and relevant academic content standards that are rigorous, specific, sequence, clear, focused, and measurable, and ensuring that content standards developed in core academic areas reflect high expectations and in-depth mastery, clearly grounded in content, grade by grade and course by course, understandable to parents and teachers, and we touched on that a little bit at the last meeting around making sure we're not compromising the academic language around certain content areas. Um, so, and, and sometimes we're not able to word a standard that's necessarily understandable to parents, but we can create support documents to help parents understand what that standard is. 
um, be developed in full recognition of time available to teach um, the core academic areas at each grade level, be measurable whenever possible, in a reliable, valid, and efficient manner. Which all of this, as um, we touched on a little bit with ESSA, um, and, and you know, looking at the standards, looking at assessments, all that needs to be in alignment. And I'm very happy to be in a state that works very hard around aligning their assessments with the content standards. So just another reference, State Board Policy GCS-F-012 does guide the um, internal work within curriculum and instruction in the review process. And just to point out one particular item in that policy around the um, review of standards is to occur every five years. And we are currently in the fourth year of implementation of our um, English language arts and mathematics. So we are very much in that timeline within the policy. Another just quick reminder around Session Law 2014-78, Section 6, the current standard course of study remains in effect until official notice is provided to all public school teachers, administrators, and parents or guardians of students enrolled. I think that's important to reiterate, and I think I've tried to include that multiple times because we do get a lot of questions from the field asking, you know, do we have new standards next year? Well, that's something that we would obviously um, you know, involve and also communicate clearly in advance of any implementation of new standards. In the last meeting also, we talked a little bit about how important it is to distinguish between standards, what we want students to know and be able to do, and curriculum. So Session Law 2014-78, Section 6 still gives local boards of education um, should provide for the efficient teaching of the course content required by the standard course of study. So the State Board of Education, just for public um, information, the State Board of Education adopts the standards and the standard course of study. The local education agencies are responsible for the curriculum or the methods that are used and the materials that are used to move students to learning the standards. So just a quick overview of the standards review process. Again, this is aligned with not only our State Board policy around standards review, but also general statute, which our policy was aligned with um, when written. So the Data Analysis Committee is really, really an important key critical component, and it's the first component of looking at data that's been collected, research, and surveys. So one of the things that's important to note is that Data Analysis Committee, while the um, Department of Public Instruction Curriculum and Instruction Division provides a process for that analysis or a structure for that analysis, we are not involved in that analysis itself. We look at external stakeholders, teachers, district content experts, higher ed folks, and business representatives who are the ones who are, you know, digging into that data, whether it's um, survey data from external stakeholders, focus group data that we've already collected. Um, as Mr. Davis pointed out, we actually started the review process about a year and a half ago, maybe a little more than a year and a half ago, putting out those surveys and, and um, doing regional focus groups. But again, we paused on that and said, let's not review that external um, that data yet, let's wait on the Academic Standards Review Commission so we have um, that data to include as well. Then, if the Data Review Committee um, recommends uh, revisions, then we convene a writing team of teachers, district content experts, higher education, consult with the business community as well. Then drafts for public review and feedback would be um, provided. Drafts would be revised if needed. So that writing team comes back together, looks at what that public review feedback was, and makes determinations about potential revisions. Then the draft is presented to you all, the state board, for discussion. And if the state board provides feedback that revisions are needed, then those are, uh, again, reviewed and done accordingly. And then the drafts are presented to state board for discussion and approval, follow-up discussion and approval as needed. Then, uh, upon approval of the board, which the public would already have some indication of what potential changes would be, because when we put it out for public comment, then, you know, it's not the final draft, but it gives some indication of what direction um, or what may be recommended to the board. And then we notify all public school teachers, administrators, and parents or guardians of students and be sure that we provide professional development for teachers. So that was just a quick overview. I know um, we, we sleep, eat, and dream it, so. <laughs> but do you have any questions about the overview before we move into the content-specific um, proposed time?